I just want to quickly say before we get started, thank you guys so, so, so much for 250,000 subscribers. That is just insane. I've made a video on my 250,000 subscriber special on this channel. So if you want to watch it, click the link in the description, go on my channel, watch the video and then come back because you have a chance to win an NBA jersey. I'm giving three NBA jerseys away. Even if you don't want the jersey, what I'm going to do is send you the money through PayPal. So you have the choice, either get a jersey or just use the money for something else. So if you win, I'll send it through PayPal. So you might as well just enter if you're a subscriber of this channel. And yeah, without further ado, let's go on to the video. With the 2019 NBA Draft commencing tomorrow, I finally made my NBA Mock Draft of 2019, yesterday. Now if you want to watch that video, I'll put a link in the description, but today we're going to be talking about 5 NBA trades that could happen during the NBA Draft. Obviously, every year there's a lot of surprises, there's a lot of players that get traded that we don't expect, a lot of teams find certain assets and kind of build their season around what they do on Draft Night. Obviously, there's been a few players' names that have been up in the air of where they could be playing next season. But recently, there's been more trade rumors and more players on the trade block. Obviously, Mike Conley is a player, but who else is there? We're going to discuss five NBA trades in this video. If you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And let's get into it. Number five, Mike Conley to the Utah Jazz. We know why the Utah Jazz will try and get Mike Conley. They're in need of a point guard, and clearly they don't want to have Ricky Rubio for the future. They've already said to Rubio that they won't bring him back next season. And I guess a defensive-minded point guard such as Mike Conley, but he's also a great offensive point guard, can really contribute well with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. Now, whilst Rubio is probably a better facilitator and he has better court vision, Conley as a whole has an all-around better game. The Utah Jazz have long been going after Mike Conley, which is why they're really targeting him this NBA draft. The thing is, they were so close to getting him back in February at the trade deadline that it just seems like they could get him at this point. Considering it's pretty obvious that the Memphis Grizzlies are going to target Ja Morant this NBA draft, he's a point guard, a guy that can lead them into the future, and obviously if they draft Ja Morant, then they won't really be needing a point guard like Mike Conley. Now, what would the trade look like? Well, in my opinion, I think the Utah Jazz get Mike Conley, obviously, and the Grizzlies would get probably a guy like Dante Exum. Dante was a top five pick. The thing is, every year he almost seems to get injured and he hasn't really been able to fit in with the Utah Jazz and in the NBA in general because every time he starts to play well, he just goes down with another injury. He's a guy, if the Grizzlies can nurture, could be a really nice pairing with Ja Morant. Ja Morant at the one, Exum at the two, and then the other guy that they could go after is Grayson Allen. Obviously, he got picked last year from Duke. He is pick 21, a first round pick of last season, and he may be a guy that the Memphis Grizzlies can have off the bench. With Al Horford not opting into his contract and the potential of Kyrie Irving leaving, the Boston Celtics may have to try and go young. And Clint Capella isn't super young, but he is young enough to be a good center to pair up with Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and whoever young pieces they can draft. Now, obviously with Clint Capella, it's a weird one because the Celtics won't target Capella if they have Al Horford, but if they don't get Al Horford because Kyrie leaves, which creates a domino effect of Al Horford leaving, then you never know, Clint Capella may be a guy that they target. The thing is, because the draft is before free agency, it's one of those things where the Celtics have to know that Al Horford is returning if they go after Clint Capella, because you wouldn't want Capella and Al Horford in the same team. But if you're the Celtics and you're trying to go young, and you know that you're going to lose Kyrie and probably Al Horford, Capella is 25 years old. Pairing here with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and possibly another draft pick in this year's NBA draft, it could be an option. Obviously, Al Horford, like I said, opted out of his contract of 30 million, but the thing is, I think he may just be opting out to opt in for a longer contract and more security, which is why he opted out in the first place, but we don't know what happens because anything can happen in the NBA. Okay, now this one is one that I don't think many people were expecting, but I think Kevin Love has a chance to get traded this NBA draft. When you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers, they don't really have a fit for Kevin Love on this roster anymore. They're going to go young, they're going to draft a top 5 pick, and they're going to try and pair that with Colin Sexton. Obviously, Kevin Love is not a guy in the Cleveland Cavaliers' plans, 
But if you're the team like the Charlotte Hornets who wants to retain Kemba Walker, why not go after a guy like Kevin Love to entice Kemba Walker to stay back? This is my trade proposal. The Cavaliers get Malik Monk and the number 12 pick and probably another guy to help the contract situation work out. So maybe a guy like Marvin Williams or Bismack Biyombo. And the Hornets receive Kevin Love and maybe a guy like Jordan Clarkson to come off the bench. That is actually not that bad. Hornets get a guy to pair up with Kemba Walker and make them an actual contender in the Eastern Conference considering the East may be weak with what happens with the Celtics, etc. So that benefits the Hornets to pair up a guy with Kemba Walker, an all-star caliber player if Kevin Love can play as he did before his injury last season. And then the Cavaliers get a guy to pair up with Colin Sexton in Malik Monk as the shooting guard. And Malik Monk was drafted pick 11. He is still a guy with a lot of potential and obviously he hasn't played amazing, but he's a guy that can show a lot of potential in the league. Plus they get the number 12 pick as well. They could have a young big man they could draft such as a guy like Jackson Hayes. Like if you're the Cavaliers and you can have a guy like Colin Sexton mixed with Malik Monk, and then you can draft a guy like DeAndre Hunter, paired up with a guy like Jackson Hayes or Nazir Little or Rui Hachimura, you have a decent core if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers, all for trading one piece, and that's Kevin Love. And if you're the Charlotte Hornets, you get an all-star caliber player who obviously was not himself last season, but he's still a five-time all-star who still averaged 17 points and 11 rebounds last season whilst being injured, plus a guy like Jordan Clarkson who is one of the best six men in the league. If you're the Hornets, you would take that in my opinion because you're in that weird position where you're just out of the playoffs, but you're not bad enough to get a good draft pick or good enough to do well in the East. But with Kemba Walker, Kevin Love, Jordan Clarkson, and who knows what they can do in free agency, I reckon it's a good move. Lonzo Ball to the Phoenix Suns. Now I know what you think, Lonzo Ball, he just got traded there, he hasn't even played a game for the Pelicans. But when you think about it, the Pelicans already have Drew Holiday. That means Lonzo will play the one and Drew Holiday will play the two. But let's say the Pelicans don't really like that idea and they may look to trade a guy like Lonzo Ball who in the past has said that he would love to play in Phoenix. LeVar Ball has said he would be a great fit in Phoenix and the Phoenix Suns really want him. When you think about Devin Booker, DeAndre Aiden and Lonzo Ball as a young core, it may be really good. What the Suns have is the sixth overall pick. And with the sixth overall pick, the Suns are looking to draft a point guard. But with that said, if you're the Phoenix Suns and you're looking to draft a point guard, but let's say Garland is picked at four, Kobe White is picked at five, you have the sixth pick and you would have to draft a point guard that is way down in the NBA draft order. And not to mention the Pelicans would get an even better pick with that sixth overall pick to pair up with the fourth pick and the first pick and the other young piece of Brandon Ingram. Like that is not bad at all, but it really depends on what the Pelicans plan to do. If they plan to contend with Drew Holiday, then you'd probably keep Lonzo Ball. But if they plan to go young with Zion, Ingram, the fourth pick, the sixth pick, they would have one of the best young cores in the NBA, even if they traded Lonzo Ball and got the sixth overall pick. The thing is, if you're the Pelicans, you're not just trading Lonzo Ball for the sixth overall pick, you're acquiring another asset. This is more trade bait for the Pelicans, who could select a player like Jared Culver or DeAndre Hunter or Cam Reddish, or you pair that fourth pick and that sixth pick together, and you could get a really good all-star to pair with Zion, Drew Holiday, Brandon Ingram, such as a guy like Bradley Bill. Because if you're the Wizards, which is the next part of this trade, if you're the Wizards, you may trade Bradley Bill for the fourth overall pick and the sixth overall pick, and both teams win. If you're the Pelicans, you would have a lineup of Drew Holiday, Bradley Beal, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, and you still have a chance to get a free agent center in this year's NBA free agency. And if you're the Wizards, you finally go young and have the potential chance to be a dynasty in the future with the fourth and the sixth overall pick, which could be Jarrett Culver and Cam Reddish, and a chance to reset and start young. And at number five, Chris Paul. Apparently he's disgruntled in Houston. So with Chris Paul, we don't know what happens here because obviously the Houston Rockets are shopping Clint Capella and Chris Paul. They're actually trying to break up that team, which to me is a little bit odd considering they did make the Western Conference Finals. They weren't too far off the Golden State Warriors. I think it just comes to the relationship with Chris Paul and James Harden and I don't know how strong it is, which is why they seem to break up. I know a lot of people are gonna hate on this one because I'm a Heat fan. I'm not being biased and I'm not really being anything. I just think this is not a bad trade. 
And it probably hurts both teams a little bit, but the Houston Rockets would get Goran Dragic, who was an all-star two years ago, James Johnson to get some better depth for the Houston Rockets and just a solid wing player. And the third guy would be a guy like Kelly Olynyk or Dion Waiters. Miami would get Chris Paul. Pat Riley is a guy that gambles. Pat Riley is a guy that wants to win now and he always has a win now mentality. And I think for the Heat, if you add a guy like Chris Paul to the young core of Richardson, Winslow, Bam Adebayo, I believe he'll make those guys better and who knows what can happen there. And so this is why I believe Miami would take Chris Paul's huge contract. If you add in Dragic, James Johnson and Kelly O'Linick's contracts all together, that costs more than Chris Paul's one contract. Obviously, Chris Paul has his contract for three more years, and if you just had Goran Dragic, you could lose his contract. But in the end, three contracts versus Chris Paul's one. If I'm the Heat, I will probably just take the contract of Chris Paul, see what we can do in the Eastern Conference with Chris Paul, Josh Richardson, Justin Swinslow, Bam Adebo, and Hassan Whiteside with a 13th overall pick as well. I believe that the Heat should do that, and they can get rid of the other contracts of Goran Dragic, James Johnson, and Kelly Olynyk save a little bit of cap space, not a lot, but a little bit of cap space, and still be a good contending team in the Eastern Conference when you're not going to be bad enough to get a good pick anyway, and you're not going to be good enough to do well in the playoffs anyway. Why not take a gamble on Chris Paul? And if it doesn't work, at least he's off the books in 2021-22, and you can still contend while he's there. But at the same time, the Miami Heat may just not do that trade because it is a little bit risky, but what team is going to go after Chris Paul? I don't know. Let me know down below in the comment section because I don't believe any team would be willing to take on Chris Paul's huge contract apart from the Miami Heat who are already in contract difficulty anyway. With that said, if you guys enjoyed the video, let me know your trade predictions in the comment section below on draft night. It's been Deborny Smith. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Thank you for 250,000 subscribers. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and I'll see you guys in my next video. I am out. Peace.